Hey everyone, thank you so much for your continued love and support. Here at Sight to Go, our mission is to help everyone become more self aware. We strive to spread awareness about the various psychological factors that affect our lives. So, let's take a look at one of those factors anxiety. When we talk about anxiety, many people imagine it at its extreme, with the stereotypical behaviors like rocking back and forth and hyperventilating. Although that can be a part of what anxious people experience. But anxiety doesn't always present itself that way. It's an exhausting, often overwhelming, complex psychological issue. And it's hard to understand. The American Psychological Association defines anxiety as an emotion characterized by feelings of tension and physical changes like increased blood pressure. It's an intense emotion. A concentrated mixture of fear and worry and doom. In short, it's unpleasant. There are plenty of other tendencies you might relate to if you have anxiety. The website Our World and Data documents 284 million people battling anxiety across the globe. So there's a chance that you too are one of the people who can identify with some of the following behaviors in this video. Here are five signs people with anxiety can relate to. One, procrastination is an often battled enemy. You're anxious about something coming up in your life. It might be a graded school assignment. It might be a big presentation at work. Either way, the result is you scrolling mindlessly through social media apps, flicking through movies to watch on Netflix, or even going on a cleaning spree, all to avoid doing what you know you'll eventually need to do. It has to do with how we avoid whatever it is that fills us with apprehension or dread. It's a cycle that perpetuates itself. After you avoid that assignment or presentation, you feel better, but it only leads to you feeling more anxious in anticipation of doing the thing later. Although many people realize the direct relationship between their anxiety and their tendency to procrastinate, procrastinating is something anxiety-prone people deal with in their lives on a regular basis. Two, planning ahead painstakingly. If you're an anxious person, one way you cope is by identifying what triggers you and planning on how to avoid it ahead of time. Being prepared for the emotions and anxieties evoked by possible situations seems like the only way to gain control over your rising panic. So you try to look at future circumstances from every angle. Maybe you scribble out lists and ideas on paper, or maybe you let all of the perspective options jostle around in your head until the time you're waiting for actually comes. Sound familiar? Three, canceling plans often feels great. Not all anxious people are introverts, but when you find yourself neck deep in worry, the thought of being social doesn't always sound fun. You tend to not think twice about making plans with friends. Then when the time comes to actually hang out, you often begin to dwell on all the long overdue things you have to do or overthink about something stressful that's in the back of your mind. Sometimes is that you're generally too tired to hang out because when a person is constantly spinning into panic, it's easy to become mentally exhausted. So it follows to say that if you have anxiety, you need adequate time to calm down and recharge. Hence, it can all feel like a relief when plans fall through. Four, overanalyzing when someone's tone is different. People who experience anxiety are no strangers to overanalysis of, well, pretty much everything. We overanalyze because our brains are constantly scanning our surroundings for potential dangers, looking out for things or situations that might cause us harm. Such a trait may have come in handy for our early predecessors, who needed to look out for wild animals and other predators, but we don't have to be in a constant state of fight or flight anymore. So the hypervigilance of an anxious brain turns its efforts to noticing small changes in, say, the way a friend says hello in a slightly different way than normal, which more often than not doesn't actually mean anything. And five, getting annoyed when people confuse stress with GAD. Everyone experiences stress at one point or another, and that's pretty normal. It happens as a result of difficult, demanding, or threatening real factors. Stress is useful in that it can motivate people to get things accomplished. The anxiety someone feels in generalized anxiety disorder isn't necessarily a result of actual threatening or stressful factors though. More than this, it's debilitating and not motivating. 
If you fall into the latter category, you've probably felt the frustration at someone confusing the two. Comparing complicated mental health and normal human experience is like comparing apples and oranges, and to do so can be insulting to those suffering from anxiety. If you are a generally anxious person, these descriptions may be a common occurrence for you. It's important to recognize what's related to our anxiety so we can better understand it and therefore help ourselves better. Did you nod along to any of these signs? Do these remind you of someone you know? Surely now you can identify the reason behind some of your actions. Let us know in the comments below. If you find this video helpful, be sure to share it with someone who would benefit from it too. Don't forget to click the like button and subscribe for more content. And as always, thanks for watching. Also, we partnered with BetterHelp, an online counseling platform aimed to help make counseling more accessible and affordable. If you know someone who could benefit from online counseling, consider signing up through our link below. This will help support the channel too. If you have any questions or concerns, feel free to email us.